Hi folks, this is Randy Schuster and I'm one of the professors who's in the cohort that is working with concepts for high flex courses, which means that students have a lot of flexibility in how they access the learning materials for the class. So I'd like to show you how I've set up one particular class that I'm doing. It's my Design 301. It's a tech ed course for introduction to AutoCAD. And I'd like to just share with you how I've set mine up and some of the thoughts that I've got and about why I've done that. So here we go. This is my Canvas site. You'll see on the home page that the first thing that I hit them with is the calendar. And this allows them to see when I will be lecturing and what I will be lecturing about so that they choose to attend the lecture they can do so and it shows when I will have labs available we're very fortunate that our labs are software based and so IT has set us up with VMware virtual machineware so that our students can use our software through our computers on basically any Mac Windows or Chromebook and we've been testing it. It seems to work pretty well uh, So we've got our our specific times when I will be live online and the students can see when that is and They can also see their due dates and what's due I've set it up so that it's the same thing every week. I just find it's easier for me and there are some times though that there's a portfolio due that's just a checkup like here you'll see that it's not really due yet but I encourage my students to uh, submit early and often so that there's at least something in there and then they get to look at it again so sometimes it'll be um, something that's not quite due yet and sometimes it does say, uh, this is again, this is a pre-check. And so maybe down here, oh, it's now due. Okay, so, but they're turning something in every day or every week. And the, the they're listed here. So this is, to me, a very important aspect of what I'm doing for them. So they can see at a glance what's coming up and when things are due and how to access it. Uh, I'm using Discord because it gives me a lot of capabilities and students can get into it and they can have back channel communications with each other, which is really, really nice. Okay, and so they can share that. Then I actually tell them about the flexible learning. They can, um, things are due at a specific time but they can choose to access the material how they want. They can participate directly and live online with me. They can do self-directed study through the modules that I've put together. They can watch recordings of previous lecture and labs, and they can participate directly in person. There's one other thing that's not on this one yet because I've just got it set up, but I've worked with RAD so that they are going to do a section on how to read specifications. So that's going to be available to them also. Uh, of course, this participate directly in person is not available at this time due to the COVID-19 health crisis. So there's the guts of what we're doing. And then of course I have my syllabus. I have my grading policy. I put it all right here so that they kind of have to see it. <laughs> it's right there, uh, right for them. I have uh, a grading policy, which I believe is flexible for the students. I, I uh, accept late work, but I only grade half of it at the end of the semester. So they can submit it whenever they want, but they're only going to get half of it graded. I also um, 
allow them that if they have submitted a significant amount of work and they just need minor revisions, that they can do revision work without a penalty. So I try to be very flexible on that without killing myself with lots and lots and lots of work. Uh, so this is how um, how that's done, okay? So that's, to me, part of the flexibility content of it. Uh, the attendance policy is basically wide open, although I tell them that there is great benefit to seeing stuff done on time and that I do watch that, um, that they are accessing the learning modules and you'll see how I do that in a little bit. Uh, so that's kind of it. We have uh, an online workbook that they can see directly. We have some information about how to save their work. We're a, um, we supply everything in this class. Um, and then they have to certify that they've read this. So that's sort of the, the gist of how I go about doing it. The modules are all set up in the same fashion for each module. So first of all, I've got useful technical information. This is just stuff that helps them learn how to work our computers and work in the class. Uh, we have this professionalism report. That's a small part of their grade that encourages professional work habits. And then each module, each kind of like subject is set up in the same way. There are tutorials on how to do it that we've made. Now these tutorials are mine right now. I do have a team that is working for me that's taking my modules and making them actually high quality videos. I think that that's something that's very important that uh, as professors, we are not video editors. I don't think we're particularly good at it and it's not what we're paid to do. We're paid to teach. And so I've put together a large number of these and I, uh, through the good graces of my dean and our department, have been able to hire student help to create these modules. And that's what is being made up here. Right now, they're working through these for me. Okay, so there's tutorials. Uh, there will be, when they're done, lecture and lab recordings. Okay, and then there's a list of exercises that need to be done. So this is a description of what needs to be done and how long I think it will take. And then the final portion, get rid of that, is actual graded work. So this is where they're going to do the grading uh, to put the work in. And it's got my rubric for it, my grading criteria. It's not really a rubric, it's my grading criteria. Uh, and so each section is set up, each module is set up in the same way where there's tutorials, lab recordings, and I hope that being very systematic about it, we'll get this done. Now, most of these tutorials I've grabbed from recordings of lectures that I've done in the past. And that's why they're fairly low quality and I'd like them to be made high quality. Okay, I've also got another team working for me of really high quality programming students that are creating automatic checkers. So some departments have turn it in and this and that and there's, it's very easy to do some automatic checking. With AutoCAD, not so much. So we are programming our own grade checkers to do uh, a portion of the grade checking. Um, so here's one of the things that's important to me is no matter how they've accessed the material, they're going to submit for grading in the same way. 
I'm not creating separate assessment methods. So no matter how they've accessed it, they're going to have to present to me this, um, uh, this same module for grading. I'll also find, let's see if I've got it on here yet. Um, so one of the difficulties, of course, is with access, but we have our computers available. I have decided that they can present their work, but um, they need to do two short skill demonstrations. So the way I'm able to do it is I can have up to 10 of these running on a Google Meet at any one time. I can run 10 Google Meets at any one time and I can use a screen record to watch it and, and check it. So they're just going to have to do a screen record of the uh, skill assignment as I go. And so that won't take me a lot to be able to do. It's actually ungraded work except that they have to pass it to be able to pass the class. So I think assessment is one of the biggest issues with a flexible system like this. And the other thing that's very important is how we set it up so that it's not onerous and more work for us. We're not doing two or three classes. So that's my attempt, how I've set up the modules to make it that way. Um, so I also have a discussion section where um, uh, students post draft copies of their submittals and they get feedback from other students before they s make their final submittal to me. The, I've, I've done that in the past quite a bit. It's very, very successful. Students give each other the best peer-to-peer -peer feedback and they get to see uh, the quality of work that uh, most students are able to, to create. And so I tend to get good work back. Um, and with AutoCAD, fortunately, we do have a number of ways to make sure that the work is not plagiarized. So we're, we're pretty careful and able to do that. So that's my discussion section. Grades uh, just come up as grades. Um, um, I don't have anything listed in here yet. Well, if I were in a student view, I think that would show up a little bit better. And uh, so that's, that's my setup. Here are some of my main thoughts. One is how does this get done where it's not... Uh, onerous workload increase on the professors. And to me, that's done by having excellent support on the technical side so that I don't have to do, I don't have to be the video editor, the video creator, the PowerPoint, um, put the, put the um, transcript on it and the closed captioning. Uh, I'm very fortunate that my dean and uh, workforce development are allowing me to uh, use high quality, very inexpensive student help to do that. And so far, so good. If you're interested, you can get a hold of me, Randy Schuster, S C H U S T R, at arc.losrios.edu, and I can show you that. Um, and the other one is how do we make assessments so they are not onerous, especially technically where students have to be able to screen record and do things. So fortunately, we have virtual machineware being uh, brought up throughout the campus. And so you may be looking at that. So there's a quick view of my course. Please get a hold of me if you're interested in hearing about how it's going. And um, I'll love to talk to you about it.